We've come to the second part of our two-part discussion on the exposure triangle. We're talking about ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. In this module, we want to begin working with those three settings in combination with the lighting of our scene. So that may be we're shooting outside, uh, or we're by a window, or we, for whatever reason, we haven't been able to get proper exposure with just those three settings, so we're adding light into our scene. However you're doing it, this module is about pulling all that together and, and having it all work together in unison. I also want to say if you've been enjoying this series, please make sure uh, to subscribe if you haven't yet. Please hit that subscribe button, like this episode, and if you know others who would benefit from it as well, please feel free to share with them. Thank you for being here at the Indie Lot, and this is the Filmmaker's Boot Camp. Okay, so what you're trying to do from an exposure perspective then is you're trying to balance out these three settings so that you can get that exposure meter closer to the middle. A tick left or tick right should be fine, but uh, I generally try to get it as close to the middle as possible, if not dead on. Okay, so it's, it's a balancing act. When we talk about ISO, when we talk about how if you have your ISO settings too high that you get all the image noise and you degrade the image. So you really have a limit to how much you can, can bring that up uh, as it relates to your exposure. So I find for me, indoors shooting at 200 ISO is where I usually try to keep it. Now, if it's dark outside, sometimes I'll go as high as 400, but I generally do not go over 400 when I'm shooting. If I just can't get the right exposure level, I'll just shoot underexposed and try to adjust it a little bit in post. It's probably, I don't know, I've heard people actually say shoot to the left of the exposure, shoot to the right of it. I don't know what's the correct correct way to do it. I just find that if I'm a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left of it, it should be fine. But there is a limit on that. And so I know my limit usually is around 200, 200 to 400. I'm going to just go ahead for now and leave, leave it at 200. Or actually, you know what, because it's just so dark in here, let's just go ahead and let's bump this up to 400. Okay. And let's see where we're at on our exposure meter. Okay. So there we are. We're a little bit uh, left, a couple ticks left of center. Okay. The 1.8, I know that if I go lower on that aperture, that I'm going to brighten up the image because it's going to, the, the fin stop's going to get smaller inside the lens, therefore creating a bigger hole or iris inside the lens and letting more light in. But I, I'm at the limit of what my f-stop can, can go. And so I can't really change anything more on my aperture setting. So the only other setting I have here that I can change is my shutter speed. And I'm going to bring it up to 50. Now, there's a reason why I'm bringing it up to 50. Let's quickly talk about that because I'm kind of stuck there. Now, look at this movie recording size. You can ignore the 1920 by 1080. Okay, but it's that number 24 that's there. I'm shooting at 24 frames per second. Okay, 24 frames per second. And the rule of thumb is, as it relates to the shutter speed, shutter speed determines how much blur happens in your image. It's called motion blur. Okay, remember I showed you that I'm shooting at 24 frames per second. In cinematography, okay, uh, in film, again the general rule of thumb is that the human eye is more used to a ratio of motion blur that is created when you have a shutter speed that's two times your frame rate. So at 24 frames that'd be 48. Now my particular camera uh, doesn't go to 48 but the next closest thing is 50. So I'm locked in on my shutter. I can't go any lower than, than that if I'm gonna try to stick to that two times the rate, right? I'm gonna say that I'm stuck here. I'm locked down at 50. On the other end, on the ISO, we're locked down at 400. We don't wanna go higher because again, the higher we make ISO, the more sensitive we make the sensor, but it creates a degraded image because it starts introducing more pixel pixelization or, or uh, degradation of the image. So really the only thing here that I can adjust is my my aperture, okay? Because remember, I'm locked in on both ends. I'm locked in on ISO, I'm locked in on shutter. So aperture is what I need to use to try to get my exposure 
meter to be correct. But you can see I'm already as low as I can go on aperture. So what is my solution? How do I fix this problem? And the way that this problem gets fixed is I've got to introduce lights into my scene. Okay, and so this is where lighting becomes really important. Okay, so I've turned on lights, and if you look, my exposure meter is activated right now, and you can see that I'm a couple ticks to the right of, of center, and it's slowly moving right as uh, my lights warm up and get, and get brighter. We may even see that meter jump a couple more times maybe. Just using the settings within the camera, I got as close as I could get to, to proper exposure and was unable to do so and so I had to introduce more light. Now, uh, one thing you can do for introducing more light is you can use actual lights, of course. And these lights that I'm using, I have two, two sets of lights set up, one on each side of this tree, and just using the setup that I showed you uh, in the previous module. Uh, the other way you can do it is if you do have a, a, a well-lit outside, you could try to shoot in rooms with lots of windows and, and just make as much use of the, of the natural light as you possibly can. So let me see, I wanna get this, uh, let me first start with ISO. See if I can get proper exposure. And I'm, I'm just left of center, but you know what? I would actually be fine to keep my ISO lower and to ha and to be that close to properly exposed, I would shoot I would shoot this no problem. But just for the sake of this training, let's go ahead and bump that back up to 400. All right, and so now we're we're a little far right, but what we're going to do to compensate is we're going to modify the aperture and we're going to increase it. And so you can see that as I increase the aperture, you can see how it, the fin size inside is growing, which is cutting down light in the lens so that when that shutter opens up to let the light into the sensor, it's not as much light. And so you can see now we've got proper exposure. We're, we're as high or as low as we're gonna go on our endpoints. And you know we're using, we're adding in more light through the lights that are in the room. So one other thing you may have noticed too now that I've introduced the lights is the overall quality of the image you're looking at now has changed. It's not great, but it's improved quite a bit. And that is, again, because now that we've introduced lights, see when we were in that lower light situation, the iPhone camera was automatically adjusting ISO to increase it, to try to increase the sensor uh, sensitivity to the light and therefore introduce all kinds of noise, all that color pixelization that you saw. Now we've added lights into the scene, which is, you know, uh, the camera is now probably automatically readjusting its internal settings for getting proper exposure, probably has reduced ISO and therefore the image is cleared up. And again, it's not perfect. I wanna ask this question too, why is exposure important? Well, obviously it's important because it determines uh, how well you can see your image. If it's too dark, too underexposed, you're gonna have a hard time. And if it's too bright, that's a problem as well. So if you're overexposed or you're underexposed, okay, and especially by a lot, uh, what that means is you're actually losing image information in different parts of your, your shadows, highlights, and your midtones. Let me kind of demonstrate this. Again, uh, I'm gonna use ISO to demonstrate. I'm gonna bring this up, okay, and just greatly overexpose the image, okay? And you can see now how blown out this image has become and that Im image information in those highlights that we can see is actually completely gone now. Some of it's completely gone. The image is basically ruined. And so you don't want to overexpose. And in the same way, you don't want to underexpose either. Because if you underexpose, again, uh, you're losing information in the shadows more. And here it does, you may not notice as well, but you are actually losing information. So we've talked about the exposure triangle. Remember, it's comprised of three settings. Your shutter speed. Remember, shutter speed is that barn door inside the camera body. It opens and closes, allowing light to penetrate into the camera body and then be exposed to the sensor that's inside there. As a general rule for cinematic types of shooting, you know, to try to get the film look, for example, remember what we said that the shutter speed uh, should be set to two times your frame rate. So on my Canon DSLR at 24 frames per second, that would mean a shutter speed of 48, okay, or 148. But my camera doesn't 
it doesn't give me the option to choose 4850 is the next closest and so that's what I choose. You'll be locked down on your shutter in, in that respect if you're trying to get the film look again because you're setting that shutter speed at two times the frame rate. Okay, So if you're shooting a, a film at 30 frames per second, then you would set that shutter speed to 60 or 1 60th. Okay? All right, so shutter is is one part of that exposure triangle. On the other end, okay, is your ISO, and that is the the setting that affects the sensitivity of the sensor inside the camera body. So the shutter barn door opens, lets light in to hit the sensor, and the ISO controls that sensor sensitivity. So the higher the number on that ISO, the brighter your image becomes, but remember, greater the sensitivity or the higher that number, that means you're introducing image noise and you're degrading the overall image quality. Really, what you're left with once you set those two endpoints is you're left with your f-stop, okay, or aperture. That's determined by the lens you use. Some lenses will support a lower f-stop. For example, uh, with my setup, I have a 50 mil lens that supports an f-stop of 1.8, which is a very good value for low light situations because that f-stop can get really small, therefore opening up the the iris, so to speak, the hole w within the lens that's allowing light to come through the lens. My other lens, my kit lens, and then I have a, a, another lens that's a 75 millimeter to 300 millimeter zoom lens. The lowest f-stop I can get at the at the shortest um, focal length of those lenses is 3.5, so quite a difference between 1.8 and 3.5. So those lenses aren't as good for low light situations. So those three settings, again, shut speed, ISO, f-stop or aperture. You're trying to, to get as best of an exposure as possible. Oftentimes I shoot a little bit to the left just because I like the look and feel of, of the lower exposure. But you know, it's kind of you'll you'll have to just judge for yourself as the as the cinematographer, as the director, what kind of exposure you want to get. But if you're going by the meters and trying to put it in the middle, then of course you'll be using those three settings to get it as close as possible. And when you just can't get it any closer, you know you gotta add light. And so be sure to think about how you're going to shoot your scene. Are you going to add supplemental lights or do you need to be outside or do you need to be closer to a window or a set of windows so that you can make use of the natural light that's outside? And so again, all these settings are going to affect the overall image that your camera produces.